it's really cool to be on a train talking. Uh, and we hope we hope you enjoy your journey. Um, so just introduce ourselves. I'm Stephen, and this is David. And and we are identical twins. Just in case you were wondering. Uh, we started the Happy Pair 11 years ago, uh, and the Happy Pair we try to. Um, I guess we strive to be all about health, happiness, and community, but it wasn't always the case. Um, we were total meatheads. Uh, so I, I don't know if anyone went to an all boys school or not. Uh, I think okay, obviously the girls didn't. But um, for, for those of you who went to an all boys school, which we did, we played a lot of rugby and we were total meatheads, total jocks. Uh, you know, burgers and chips, a standard Irish diet. Love nothing more going out in the lash and chasing women. That was that was where it was at. We were pretty much cavemen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we're we're there's us two and we've two younger brothers. So we're all four boys. So it was real male centric. Um, yeah, we didn't. You know, when we went, uh, I'd go for it. Anyway. Anyway. Um. So after college, so we both finished school. Didn't really know what we wanted to do. And you know, I guess what did we do, Dad? And Dad, you know, business degree is good. So yeah. So went off to the, to college and. Uh, studied business um, and business. You know, we were really excited because it was a chance to meet women. Uh, like, cause it essentially left an all boys school, so that was genuinely it was the most exciting thing. Um, but finished college and really didn't know what we wanted to do. Uh, and I guess we kind of this definition of success that you know by thirty I want to be a millionaire, and by forty I want to have a private island, and fifty I want to be have a helicopter and all this type of thing. You know, definition of success. Anyone who studied business, it's all about making money, and the more money you make, the happier you're going to be. Um, and I, I kind of had dreams of being an investment banker, and I'll, I'll do it until I'm 30, and then after that, sure, I'll be retired, I'll be a golf pro, or something like this. Um, Thanks, here go. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and then I guess after college, we kind of didn't really know what we wanted to do. Um, so we were kind of, you know, scratching around, wondering, hey, what are we going to do, Steve? What are we going to do? So we ended up deciding, um, let's run a marathon, Steve. Great idea. So we decided, okay, time to run a marathon. You know, we finished college in September and we kind of, we decided let's run a marathon. So, oh, is that what I meant to be talking about? Yeah. Okay, so we ended up going, first of all, before that, we ended up going interrailing. So we were on trains, lovely trains, great way to travel. Woohoo, go trains. Go trains, yeah. Uh, so we went interrailing around Europe and we were training for this marathon, as I said. And it was total, we were abusing ourselves around Europe, pretty much just partying our way around. And we got back and we realized, Jesus, I feel like muck, Steve. And we have this marathon in a, in a month. You know, so we decided, okay, Steve, what are we going to do? Let's do a detox, Dave. Great Let's idea. do a detox. You know, so this was, this was like nearly 15 years ago where detox wasn't very popular at all. Um, and Dad was ahead of the curve at the time. And he had this thing called the World Wide Web in the house. <laughs> and he had a high speed, you know, modem. Uh, so we went up to the house and we started looking, right, detox, how to be healthy. So we started looking into that and we realised, okay, Steve, we're not going to drink for a month, right? Great idea. And we decided, okay, right, we're going to eat porridge for brekkie and brown bread and no white bread sandwiches, right? Okay, so this was our detox and we decided we were going to do this for a month and see what it was like doing the marathon. And uh, the marathon came along and we beat the Kenyans. <laughs> we did. No. Uh, no, we didn't, but uh, we ended up finishing the marathon and we were feeling good, you know, we had lots of energy. And we'd given up booze. Yeah, we'd, we'd given, given up booze. booze, that was the main thing, we'd given up booze, so we had a bit more money in our wallets. And um, anyway, we did the marathon and that was grand, and we decided it was the end of October, so we said, okay, jeez, I've got loads of money, like, let's, let's see if we can do this till Christmas. So we did it till Christmas, and uh, Christmas came, and we were meeting all the lads from school again. So here we were, we were all going out in the points again, and this was it, we were... You know, this was the end of our detox and we were going on the lash, you know, typical kind of Irish caveman fashion. And uh, we were going along to meet the lads and, you know, here we were, they lined up all the points and we started, here we go, yes! And we started drinking them and for some reason it just didn't feel right for us. I don't know why. Uh, we both just got abused for the, for the two hours called Every Name Under the Sun and we ended up going home on the train, trains are good, early. Uh, we got the last train home, kind of with our tails between our legs. And I guess this was the start of our own journey in health, really. Uh, a year ago. My go, my go. Uh, so being twin, is anyone a twin here? Fra Fra Frankie oh, has Frank twins. Frankie has two twins, not Frankie. Uh, but if uh, anyone's a twin, you spend your whole life being you Dave, or you Steve, or Flynn twin, or this type of thing, so. Or, or you spend your time competing for attention, as we're doing now. 
Uh, yes, very true. Uh, but I guess you don't learn how to be an individual. So when we finished college, as Dave said, we went away traveling, and it was time for a divorce. It was time to learn out how to, you know, I'm Stephen. Shit, I'm without David. So um, Dave bought a one-way ticket to South Africa at the time, and he thought he wanted to be a golf pro and joined Stellenbosch Golf Club. And, after about a month, Dave found out he hated golf uh, and gave up really. Um, I bought a one-way ticket to Vancouver. I went to Whistler because I'd seen kind of videos or of kind of parties and pretty women and thought, great, I want to go there. Uh, so I bought a one-way ticket to Whistler uh, and I met a guy and I happened to meet a guy from Greystones where we're from and he said I could sleep at his floor. So I slept on his floor and uh, going to an old boys school and playing a lot of rugby, I'd never really met a vegetarian and if I did he was a small skinny person that was bullied. So it, it, the idea, I, I met this, it, the, when I was sleeping on the floor of um, Connor's apartment, there was this Australian guy called Adrian and he was a vegetarian and he was cool. And I was like, oh my god, a vegetarian, this is amazing. It was like meeting a different species of human for me. I was like, wow, you're a vegetarian, what do you eat? Uh, and the whole idea for me, like, because all the way through college we ate, we lived at home and we ate what mom cooked and it was the first time being kind of away and having to cook for myself and meeting a vegetarian and I kind of asked him, what do you eat? And I was amazed with it and I ate what, I, can I eat what you eat for the week and just see what it's like? So we're eating like quinoa and lentils and black eyed beans and bulgur and barley and all sorts of weird hippie stuff and at the end of the week thought, this is amazing! The idea of thinking your food and how it affects you and health and um, at the end of the week I, I, I kind of got the phone and I, you know, this was pre-Twitter and Facebook and kind of email was, you know, you might do once a week um, once as a opposed month. to once an hour. Um, and I called Dave up and being twins you're always competing as we're doing right now but you're competing and I was like, Dave, I reckon I have one up in you. I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> uh, and Dave from South Africa. Oh, my bit. Thank you. Uh, I had actually been living with this triathlete that was really interested in health. So Steve calls me up and he says, Dave, I definitely got one up on you now. I'm a veggie. Uh, and I said, geez, Steve, that's mad. I'm living with this lad as well. And he's all into vegetables. And I haven't, meat at, I haven't eaten meat at all. And I'm a veggie as well. <laughs> and this is what actually happened. It was like twins, you know, twin power, one main. We've been cloud computing, actually, for the last, you know, for 35 years now. Um, but anyway, uh, this, this was kind of the start of our own adventures into health and we ended up spending the next couple of years traveling around the world and kind of, as Stephen said, we're very competitive so we both became veggies so we were kind of like, okay, what can we do next Steve? We can be vegans. We can be vegans. So we kind of wanted to see how far we could push the health thing. So we kind of became, became vegetarians, then it was like vegans. And then we became what's righteous a, vegan. vegan? Okay, vegan? so a vegan doesn't eat animals or dairy or anything with a face, you know. And then you can be a righteous vegan. We became very righteous vegans, <laughs> where we were judging others. Real arseholes. Real fucking arseholes. <laughs> Excuse, I know I meant not meant to curse. curse, but it helps <laughs> emphasize things. Um, but anyway, so we were traveling around. I spent a lot of time in Central America, and Steve spent a lot of time in North America. And we were, we were trying everything alternative. Like, we ended up spending time on... You know, we were separate still, so he was spending time on, you know, Burning Man and rainbow gatherings and polyamorous communities and intentional communities and hippie farms, everything alternative. We were, yeah, yeah, we'll do it. Yeah, for sure. Um, and we were really experimenting with our diet and seeing how far it, we could push it. And I remember I met all these kind of people in Costa Rica. I met this really bright-eyed American dude, you know. He, he was the first guy to free climb, free climb Angel Falls. So he was a really interesting character. Long hair, yogi, used to sit like, you know, for a 21-year-old, he was like, oh my God, this guy's like holy or something. Uh, and he was really into fasting. And, you know, if anyone knows about fasting, it's pretty much starving yourself. Uh, and he was all into this, so I was like, wow, fasting, okay, cool. Yeah, I'll give this a shot. So I went off to a beach and I fasted for a week. And I thought it was amazing, I really did. And I called up Steve, and Steve was living in France at the time, and I said, uh, Steve, Steve, yeah, you gotta try fasting. Yeah, yeah, you're just starving yourself. Yeah, amazing, you gotta try it. And Steve said, wow, okay, yeah, sure. Uh, so Steve kind of goes off, he, he went off on a bike and went off to Corsica, and he found some holy mountain. And he brought a tent, and he spent a week kind of starving himself. And uh, he calls me up at the end of the week and he goes, Dave, that was deadly, deadly. And he says to me, I got this idea. You know that veg shop in Greystones? You know, do you want to take it over and maybe like start a veg shop? Um, 
so uh, I was heading to America and I was going home for a week uh, and I walked in one Monday morning into a local veg shop where mom used to buy her fruit and veg and kind of not sure really what I was doing and you know long hair, bright coloured, strong body odour, a uh, total hippie uh, and I walked in and Gary Doolan was at the till and Gary can I talk to the manager and he said he's in the back so I kind of scruffed into the back and uh, he was sitting in the van reading the paper and I kind of knocked on the window and he opened the door and kind of real nervous and just kind of shot out can I buy your shop please? Uh, and you know, I didn't really know what would happen, and he kind of went, geez, big question for a Monday morning. Uh, and we took it from there. Like, we were looking to kind of start, like, when I said a two brand, we wanted to start a food revolution. We were so excited about what we were doing. We thought, like, ourselves, our own personal journey in terms of food was amazing. We thought, this is brilliant. I want to share this with as many people as we can. Um, like, we, I guess we, like, we, we painted it orange because it was. The first day we took over the shop, mom was helping us paint the shop. And she said, what color do you want, lads? And it was like, orange, the brightest color you can get. Whatever you can get, that's orange. Because I guess we felt we had a bigger message. Uh, when we were looking to start at first, we were thinking of starting as a charity. Oh, uh, I got, I'm going to talk okay, about that. Okay. My go. Uh, okay, so, so we ended up working at a deal and we took over this vegetable shop. And it was a really traditional green grocer. And as Steve said, like we, we kind of thought about starting it as a charity. And just to give you an idea, like we really did want to start as a health food revolution. We kind of wanted to start a grassroots, I don't know, a healthy movement or whatever the hell it was. And uh, at the time we were kind of thinking about names. And one of the names, I found a notebook there, this old shabby notebook back a few months ago when we were moving house. And I was just flicking through it and it had names of when we were starting our shop. And uh, one of the names we had was Flinner's Fruit and Veg for Social Change. Very catchy name. Uh, and we had other names, but anyway, we ended up calling it the Happy Pair. And as Stephen said, we wanted to call it. A we wanted to start it as a charity because this wasn't about money. This was like we want to get people eating vegetables. Uh, but then Dad thankfully said, "Lads, come on, you'll just regret it." Like so, we ended up just starting it as a business. And we had no experience in retail. It was 2004, so you could borrow money uh, with just a business plan on the back of an envelope. So we ended up really just doing rough, we would no business plan, we would no experience, we just had an idea that we want to start this health food revolution. We would never worked in a shop before, we didn't know much about vegetables, but we had huge passion for what we were going to do. And we kind of really believed in it, and I guess that was the real driver which got the whole thing going. My go. Uh, so we used to get up, at, you know, it was pretty glamorous, we had a red Nissan Hi-Ace 1986, get up at half four, go to Dublin Fruit Market, bang around buying your veggies it was it was really exciting then you come back to the shop and you pretty much sell fruit and veg to kind of old dears and busy moms and um, so it's pretty hard to start a food a revolution with kind of you know the elders are a bit too they're not you know they've lost the fight and the mothers are too busy with the kids so it's really hard to start a revolution so we decided okay how will we get more how will we get this make this a little more appealing and a little more interesting so back in 2004 smoothies were cool so we opened a juice bar and it got more and more people in and then one day i came in to work and dave had bought this horse box and it was like what are we doing and dave we're gonna go to festivals so we spent the summer kind of painting up a horse box and we turned it into a juice bar and we went to electric picnic uh, and went great we kind of had a bad pitch that year uh, and we were kind of you know trading away and uh, a friend of mine, Kev, was with us, and Kev kind of went, geez, I've got a good idea, and he just took off his clothes and put his apron on. Uh, and people would come up and they'd order, they'd order a smoothie, and Kev would go, great, and he'd turn around. So I, I copied him, we were both in the same, turn around, it's just a pair of cheeks facing people. Uh, and and uh, before, before long, there was a queue got bigger and bigger and bigger, and then the guards joined the queue. Uh, but I guess the whole thing was to try to get more young people involved. I remember at auction trying to sell, we bought a pallet of strawberries, because, you know, festivals, people should eat fruit, like, they, they drink too much, and, too much sauce, they should eat fruit. Uh, so we bought a pallet of strawberries, we tried selling them as sex berries. Uh, but because people, you know, at festival people are much more interested in sex. But we found that people were much more into drugs and drink than strawberries at festivals. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, people really weren't into the My go. Uh, okay, so anyway, we started, we started our shop and as Stephen said, we had a, a little red van, a little, I think it was a 1986 Nissan High Ace. And we used to go to the market every morning at 4.30. And then we used to, we, we just loved trading, being in the shop. So we'd kind of get up at 4.30 a.m., we'd go to the market, buy our vegetables and spend the day trading and talking with people and whatever. And we suffered from complete FOMO that we, we just wanted to be around the shop the whole time. Um, so we didn't really have much chance to meet girls. And here we were, we were both 24, weren't we, when we started? Um, so we used to meet girls through the shop. And there was lots of au pairs and greystones, which was great. It worked well for us. And so, because you were getting up early in the morning, you didn't really want to bring them out in the evening. So we used to say to them, uh, 
have you ever been to the fruit market? And they go, no, no, I've never heard of the fruit market. And you go, oh, it's amazing. Listen, I'll bring in a tour of the fruit market. And uh, if anyone's, has anyone been to the Dublin fruit market? No? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's, it's real old school. It's like, uh, it's full of real men. Like, you know, they're real men. And here we were both two hip, you know, two hippies with strong body odors that were really excited at 4.30 a.m. in the morning. So when we started going to the, the fruit market, the lads used to go, oh, who are these fucking idiots, you know? Like, yuppies, fucking yuppies, you know? And uh, they used to kind of stand around and you'd see, get awful stares or whatever, and they go, I'll give them two weeks, two weeks, two months at most, and they won't be in here again. And, uh, you know, yet, lo and behold, we were in there bouncing around, but, oh, Steve, look, courgettes, let's get courgettes. And we were very, very excited. And um, it, what kind of won them over was, as I said, we used to meet lots of old pairs and we'd go, oh, would you, would you like to come on a tour of the Dublin fruit market? And uh, we used to bring them in to the fruit market and they'd come in and, you know, 4.30 a.m., it was good, you know, there was, it was all, you know, above board. And we'd bring them around the fruit markets and the lads would be delighted, you know, they'd, they'd, they'd be kind of pretty girls in there and they'd be buying them flowers and giving them strawberries. And uh, after we brought in a series of different women, just on friendly excursions, tours of the fruit market, the lads kind of came round to us and uh, it kind of won for everyone, you know. Uh, I remember going to business class reunion and most of my friends in college, had kind of, they got suit wearing jobs. They used to, they kind of became accountants or some of them went on to be financial bankers, is that a word? I think it is. Investment bankers, that's the word, yeah. So investment bankers. And I remember going up to Ross's house, there was a, a reunion and we, we rocked up in our little red van and came in and one of the lads kind of learned, look, Fitter, is that true that you're, you work at a fruit and veg shop and you drive a van? I was like, living a dream. <laughs> and to us, our dream had changed so much that we were doing something that we were so excited at. Like getting up at 4.30 in the morning was just, and running around the fruit and veg market and coming back and selling it was, this was our new dream. Our, our kind of definition of success had changed totally from being all about money to be much more about health and happiness and community and, you know, see if we, you know, have a laugh most importantly, really. Um, Do you want to go? Okay, so, so uh, kind of a year into our adventure, the lease came up next door, so we decided, okay, Steve, let's start a vegetarian cafe. You know, Greystones has loads of vegetarians, doesn't it? Uh, so anyway, we decided, let's start a cafe. You know, neither of us had ever cooked before, really. Neither of us were chefs. And, um, you know, we'd once washed pots in a restaurant, so that was our only experience in it. And when we started, I remember Steve was like, we're not selling coffee, Dave. No, there's no way we're selling coffee. But here we were opening a cafe. And um, I guess we were total such idealists. Like we really, it was all about trying to make kind of healthy food more attractive and sexy. And that was the whole thing of it. And with no experience and no business plan again, it was just all built on kind of trust and expectation or whatever. And I guess from the start, because we grew up in Greystones, that's where our business started was Greystones. And that's where we grew up in. We were always very much part of the community. Like we grew up playing in every sports club that was there. And right from the start, our business is all about community. You know, we used to go to local schools and do kind of teaching kids how to juice or trying to make, you know, we figured if Coca-Cola could be sexy, why the hell couldn't fruit and veg? So we went to all the local schools and have done that for years. And uh, I guess kind of five years ago, uh, we started to sell porridge. Stephen kind of had the idea, or one of the girls had the idea. She said, uh, why don't we sell porridge? You know, here we do, we make it every day for ourselves. Why don't we just sell it? So um, Steve said, okay, okay, let's do that, but let's just see, maybe let's just give it away for free for a week. And if people won't take it for free, then they definitely won't pay for it. So it's like, okay, good idea, Steve. So, so we started doing porridge and uh, we gave it away for free for the first week. And uh, at the end of the week, you know, people were starting taking it and it was like, oh, it's free, okay, yeah, sure. Oh, lovely, yeah, I'll take some. Oh, I'll take some too, you know. As you can imagine, people like free stuff. So it came to the end of the week and uh, here we were deciding, Right, what can we charge, Steve? How much are we gonna charge? This is a great business idea. And uh, we both kind of realized, Steve said, I don't know, I kind of like giving away for free. Like, it feels nice. Like, I feel like, you know, I don't know. Uh, so we decided, okay, well, let's give away for free for another month or another week. So we gave away for free for another week and that's been kind of the last five years. You know, we give away free porridge every morning and have done for five years. And it's great, you know, it, it kind of, people go, oh, I'm just with porridge, and uh, how much is it? Oh, it's free. So it's kind of, I, I guess it was all about trying to get people to eat healthy breakfasts. And uh, it's funny as well how 
your kind of ideals are as, as the business grows, how your ideals are challenged continuously. We opened our second cafe about two years ago, and I remember it was like, we're going to charge for porridge. I think the time is coming. Capitalists. Right? We've given, yeah, let's be capitalists. We've given enough free porridge away, and I remember it was the first day, and I decided, okay, I, let's charge a euro for porridge. Okay, yeah, let's do it. And I came up, the first customer came in was Deirdre, and Deirdre was kind of a strong woman, and very strong opinions. And Deirdre came up and she said porridge, I was like, oh shit. And I went and got the porridge and kind of came back and was like, it's one euro? And she went, one euro! I can get a free, so it's free, 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 free. So it's free. It's funny though, as the business grows, how your ideals are continuously challenged. Uh, but I, I, one more thing in the community thing was that, I guess we started doing baking contests. That was one thing that, uh, another idea which kind of happened, we were, we used to, you know, you know the way apples is September and October in Ireland. Apples are, that's when apple season is. And whatever this year, I think it was 2004, there was a huge apple season, as you'll all remember. It was a huge apple crop. Um, and all, there was loads of ladies and old people bringing in apples into the shop. And they'd say, I'm sick of looking them rot in the garden. Will you just give them away for free or something? So, so we started giving the apples away for free. And... Uh, you know, Mrs. Nugent baked us an apple pie and she brought it in. She said, lads, thanks for the free apples. Here's an apple pie. And we said, oh, lovely. Thanks a million. And then the next day, Mrs. O'Reilly, she brought in an apple pie. And she said, lads, I baked you an apple pie. And we tasted and we said, uh, oh, geez, Mrs. Nugent's was actually better than your one. And she went, what? What? So we realized people were very competitive about apple pies. So we decided, gee, Steve, let's have an apple pie contest. So we decided, okay, we, we took out ads in the local parish bulletins, and um, we said, apple pie contest, Greystones, inaugural apple pie contest. And uh, we kind of put up categories for kids, and we got, you know, real apple pie experts from the local growing club, and, you know, some elders, and it was great. You know, we had seven people, seven judges, and there was maybe 30 people baked apple pies, kids and parents and everything, and we'd live music. And uh, great crack, you know, and we've been doing that every year and lots of other kind of baking contests, so. Do you want to bring it back to today? Oh, uh, back to today, yeah, and what we do, yeah. So what are we, you, do you want to oh, go no, you, Oh, is that me? So I guess back to today, I guess we're just trying to tell lots of stories about how we kind of came to be here today, but in oh, terms of today, yeah, do you want to go? Yeah, okay. like I guess today, you know, we've been at it more than 10 years. This is our 11th year in business. And I guess it started with me and Steve in the veg shop with a red van, but today there's probably 70 of us working with us now. Uh, we've got a shop and we've got two cafes and there's a farm and there's online bits and there's, you know, it's kind of sprawled out. As you can see, we're both, uh, you know, we're not very organized, so we like to drill loads of little oil wells and see if any of them spurt oil. Um, I guess we won loads of awards over the years and I guess our cookbook last year, we ended up doing a cookbook because people kept saying to us, would you just do a book, lads? You know, your recipes are all different. So we ended up doing a cookbook and it ended up being the best-selling cookbook in Ireland last year. And uh, seven months later, it was still number one last week, amazingly. And uh, I guess it's all grown, and it feels like the revol our, what we started off with kind of a health food revolution. That was the idea of it. And it feels like it's kind of grown legs a bit. And the book's been released in the UK at the moment, which is really exciting. And uh, it feels kind of like a bit of a dream that we kind of started with no business plan and no idea of what we were doing. And, you know, two weeks ago, we were over cooking with Jamie Oliver. We're part of his food tube network. We shoot videos with him and do stuff for his channel and write for his websites and stuff. So in terms of, we started off with a dream and we had no idea what we wanted to do or what it was going to be, but we really wanted to start a, a kind of health food movement. And all I can say is that 10 years later, passion has kind of made it all happen, really. Um, well, like, uh, in terms of sales, we're at last we did approximately around 3 million. Uh, and people tend to mix up sales and profit just to, before people go, wow, what are you doing with all the cash? Uh, sales and profit are two different things, uh, and paying staff of 70 people is quite a lot. Uh, yeah, um, you know, in terms of ourselves and our own personal wealth, we don't really have much at all. You know, we, Jake got his, his own first car last week. Uh, I, Zero uh, one. I rent my house. <laughs> We're not rich, but we've an extremely rich life and we have a business that we love. Um, and I guess us talking today is just more to remind people if you do what you love, it's, it's easier to get up at 4.30 in the morning and go to the fruit market. You know that way. Um, so go trains. Yeah. So get trains. Yeah. Trains are great. <laughs>